Hey guys, welcome back to the Believe, Be Real, Be Bold podcast. I am honored to be joined by my guest from San Diego, Justine Shigley. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you. Who is that little guy that I see right there? Oh my gosh, this is my uh, little labradoodle buddy, 12 weeks old. He's been such a blessing to the family. I want to just like reach through my camera and grab him and take him from you and uh, never give him back. Oh, I know. I get that a lot. I do. He's a beautiful color. He's more red than golden. Yes, totally. He, he is. And I think that was um, the deciding factor. I was stuck between him and another little girl who was uh, tan with some beautiful markings, but he just, the color on him just really gravitated me and I just, I fell in love. Yeah, we are dog people around here on the podcast. Oh, that's perfect. I love him. And I've never really been an animal person. So I, it's funny, I've tried to have animals before and I've never really had that bond with them. And with him, I just, there's like this bond and I, I can understand, you know, why animals are so important to people where I really didn't understand that aspect before, but this guy is just like another child of mine. Right, they become part of the family and they have their own personality and they are a big priority, right? a huge priority <laughs> and they they kind of take away from other priorities that we were just talking about right yes they sure do they sure do but at the same time i think when we're when we're introducing something new to our lives it's kind of you kind of get shaken up and you kind of have to figure out where things are going to fall into place and how it's all going to pan out so um it's i think it's been a good uh reality check for me that not everything can go my way and it, the world as we know is definitely not perfect um so we just have to kind of figure out what our priorities are and how we're going to make them happen and you know really set our goals and, and and accomplish them right they say that having a pet in the family is really good teaching responsibility to children <laughs> and how is it being uh basically learning the responsibility as an adult you know, my my children, I think they just like to play with, with him. Um, you know, I, I lost my husband in a car accident uh, eight years ago, and I really had to take, take away, you know, that, that part, you know, of like that parenthood. I just, I just feel like I, I, I feel like my kids have, have gone through so much and, you know, we've, we've, grown together as a family independently with myself and my son and my daughter that I really took on that role to like just do everything to like try to make it easier for them but at the same time I think I that may have not been the best move either sure out of out of protecting your kids but also keeping the unit together right after such a devastating life event mm -hmm. it, it was definitely a struggle um, and, you know, I, I often hear, um, you know, why doesn't your daughter make her own lunch? Like, you work full time, you know, you, you do your fitness, you have the dog, you know, why can't she make her own lunch? And I said, well, I want to make her lunch. Like, that's something my mom did for me every single day. You know, what's wrong with making her lunch? Like, I, I don't know, like, it, it's just something like, and, and with my son, like the same thing, like, Justine, um, why aren't they putting their laundry away? And I well, I, I could just do it for them. You know, I, it, it's, 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 a, it's a, like a balance that I'm still trying to figure out. And yeah, it, it's been eight years, but I feel like it was just yesterday at the same time. And, you know, my son has really bad struggles, you know, growing up with not having a dad. He's still, that's why I got Buddy. I really got Buddy for, for Dylan. Um, Dylan was definitely um, missing the fact or he doesn't understand why he's the only kid that, you know, doesn't have a father or, you know, when donuts come around for Father's Day, he doesn't get to share his donuts with his dad. Um, so, you know, he's, he still comes um, and wants to sleep in bed with me. He has nightmares, night terrors. Um, so I, I thought that, you know, Buddy would be a good addition to kind of help um, Dylan with, with that transition and, and helping him have a, have a companion. Sure, of course. I, I can see how a dog, a playful pup, can bring so much positivity into, into your home, as well as that little bit of maybe life change for them and responsibility as if they had like a younger sibling that they had to take care of. Yeah, they, they, they are now arguing over 
you know, who's going to clean up the, the pee when the dog has an accident inside the house. And, you know, they're, they don't want to pick up dog poop, even though before we got the dog, everybody was, I'm going to help out. I'm going to do this. So I think it's going to just be more, we're going to have to try to figure out a, a rotating schedule and figure out how we're all going to take care of them. Yeah, because it's a team effort, um, whether whether you're a single parent of divorce or in your case, a, a widow and raising two kids on your own. Yeah, and now I got a third. <laughs> and he he might be... Okay, he's the third cutest of them all, but uh, <laughs> he's definitely a blessing. I am very happy that I got him. So he does kind of uh, take away from your early morning workouts, doesn't he? We were just talking about that. He does. Oh my gosh. Um, he used to wake up 3.30, set my alarm, get up, have my coffee, you know, make my oatmeal um, and my egg whites and head to the gym. And now... You know, I, I tried to do that once I got him and, you know, right there, he's waking up my children at four, four thirty in the morning. And that's just, you know, it has been really hard for me um, because now that's kind of taking away the time that I've set aside for myself to work towards my fitness goals. So I've tried to hammer out um, a little bit longer of a lunch at work. And then I go do my cardio, which people think I'm crazy. I go to the gym, I do cardio. Um, and then I'm, I'm back to the office and they're like, you would go and you work out and then you go back to work. I'm like, Hey, like I gotta do what I gotta do. I don't stink. I have baby wipes, deodorant, like body spray. Um, but yeah, I just, you, you just gotta kind of fit it in where, where you can get it in. And I'm just, I'm very driven. I've had, you know, fitness kind of saved my life. You know, if we go back to when my husband passed away. Um, I, I didn't want to be on antidepressants. Um, I had a, you know, a doctor try to prescribe me an, an antidepressant and coming from nursing, I was always against that pharmaceutical industry um, in a sense to where I don't feel like you should cope your life um, with a pill. And at the time I was 24 years old and I figured out like, there's gotta be another way. There's gotta be another version. Like I, I didn't want um, to numb myself being so young. And I knew I was young. Um, my son was eight months old. My daughter was almost four. So it was, you know, it was one of those things where I literally channeled fitness and I just, I, I went for it. And it was the one place that I really found that that, that could get out all of my strength, all my anxieties, all, all my weakness, all my anger, resentment, um, you know, cause there was a lot of times where I wanted to just sit there and like, poor me story. And I did a lot of that too, before I found that fitness outlet. So there was some definitely dark times associated with all of this as well, but it's really taught me a lot. Understandably so. And, um, you're uh, definitely allowed and encouraged to, to have those moments for sure. Um, very similarly, um, I use fitness and nutrition as my um, leveling out and my keeping steady with my mental health. I've been using it for well over 20 years to, again, like you, avoid uh, an antidepressant or a, pharma a pharmaceutical. Um, so what's your big overarching goal with your fitness and nutrition? Oh my gosh. I want my pro card so bad. I, and that <laughs> I'm going to get it. And so I'm actually switching my whole organization. So I used to compete in the NPC, the National Physique Committee. Um, and I hit that really hard. Um, I competed three times. I qualified for nationals. Um, I, I, my, I never took home first, but I took home second. Um, and I, I took a little time off. You know, when I qualified for nationals, I wasn't really at the national level. And my coach had even told me at the time, he goes, Justine, you're really going to have to take a really serious off season and you're going to have to build. You're not really like, I, congratulations for um, qualifying for nationals, but you're not nationally ready. And that actually hurt really hard. Like it, 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 it hurt me. And I was super upset over that. And I said, oh my gosh, like you literally, I just took second come off stage, super happy. And he literally like said it right there. Like there wasn't no like cooling down period or like, oh, happy, like congratulations, second place nationals. 
He was like, yep, you're going to have to really build. And so I, I took about three years off. You know, it kind of actually took me back in a sense to where I didn't know if I wanted to compete. You know, but then as I, as I took that time off and as I still continued to build, I started to notice, yeah, I had put on a lot of weight, but I still never gave up working out. So I started seeing how I was building. And then my, one of my best friends, Chrissy, uh, who also has inspired me to join the WBFF. She does my posing. Um, I work out with her as well. And now I'm with one of her coaches um, and we're just, I, I was inspired. Uh, it just, they, there's a whole different aspect to the WBFF that just looks so glamorous and, and that you do an evening gown and you get to do your, your bathing suit wear and just everything just seems so like just graceful and, and kind of like a pageant, pageanty, you know, feel to it. So I, I'm super excited. I'm hoping to get that pro card. I'm not going to stop until I get my pro card. Um, now, whether I get that in December, I don't know, um, but I, hopefully I will get it in December. I'm aiming for that. But if not, then there's, there's always more. So I want to take it international um, and I just want to like run with my dreams. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons why that niche in the industry as a personal trainer didn't really attract me to the culture and the community uh -huh. is that example of your first coach who uh, took no time to celebrate a win. Um, second place is a huge accomplishment in maybe your third competition overall. Um, if I were to get second place in a jujitsu tournament right now, my coaches would be ecstatic. And um, as a coach and learning everything that there is to know about uh, self-efficacy and empowerment and a mindset for our athletes, I never really wanted to be a part of a culture that didn't celebrate the wins and simply said, you know what, you're not good enough right now. You, you need to do this X, Y, and Z immediately. Um, otherwise, you're not going to reach your goals. Yeah, it was, a, it was a huge hit. It was, it was a really big hit because I was so proud. And then it felt like it just it was kind of like that. It, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I, it was just more of a, once I got a taste of that stage though, I've, I've loved it. So I, I love doing public speaking and I, I really do just, I, I miss being on stage and I just feel, I feel like it's just my time and it's, it's like that. It's like, I'm, I'm coming back and I'm coming with power and, you know, I'm turning all of those struggles back into my strengths, you know, go, go back to that Virago saying, which I, I support that um, nonprofit organization a hundred percent. And I really hope you get a link up with Brittany. Mm -hmm. We already got to chat. Thank you so much for the, for the introduction. That was amazing. Good. I'm so happy that you got a chance to meet with her. She's, a, she's incredible. <clears throat> yep. And in chatting with you last week, and I know we were both sick and it was just so great to reschedule and still be able to do this, but your purpose for the fitness and nutrition uh, going all in, it's more for you than it is anything else. And it's more about personal empowerment and personal growth. Am I right? A hundred percent. And to kind of take away a little bit about that is that my children are always watching me. So my daughter is probably my biggest fan in the whole entire world. And my son, he, he's a huge fan as well, but nothing in comparison to, to Jalen. She really looks up to me. Uh, she's a competitive gymnast. Uh, Dylan is in, in football. And they're, they're just, they look up to me. And, you know, Dylan will be eating something. I'm like, Dylan, that looks so good. And, you know, I want to bite. And he goes, well, mom, you're not going to get first place. You know, like, you can't eat that. You know, and then Jalen, she just, she cheers me on. And they, when, my, when your children come to you and say how proud they are of you, it really, it's, I just always want to show them that no matter what, if you really put your mind to it, um, you can do anything. I, I, my heaviest, I was 245 pounds. Not too sure if I shared that with you uh, last time, but I was uh, 245 pounds at my heaviest. Um, and I was so depressed, I had postpartum depression. I sat on a couch for a year. And one day it was just click, like you're gonna get up and you're gonna go. Um, so I, I lost that weight and I, and I looked good and everything was, was, was great. 
then I get married, fall in love, and then my husband's taken from me. So it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Uh, but it's always been a struggle with me with weight and regardless to, to anything. I, I grew up being made fun of um, in elementary school. I was, I was literally teased and tormented. I'd cry um, just about every single day about how they would make fun of me and my weight. So that's always followed me throughout my whole entire life. And I've really had to work with coaches on correcting my eating behaviors and figuring out what my triggers are and how am I going to turn these things around and, and really help utilize these tools that I've used that, that have harmed me and how can I use them to empower me? So I, I've, I've had to do a lot, a lot of work with a lot of coaches and just kind of really get down to the core because there's a reason why um, we self-sabotage or there's a reason why, you know, we don't feel like we're good enough. And when you really go down and you do the deep work and you figure out what it is that's made you who you are and that light bulb clicks, it, it, it's like you're almost you're, you're awake and you see things differently and you view things differently and you're more positive and you have a better outlook on things. But I, it's, if I encourage people all the time to, to get help, talk to people um, and, and figure out what it really is because you can really do a lot of good uh, by doing the work that you need to, to just, you know, enhance your life. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And one, one day we just get up off the couch. And um, if I ever take like a two week break from exercise, working out, like, yes, I was sick for seven days and I couldn't train jujitsu. I finally got back to it. And it was one of the best training days I've ever had as a blue belt um, because I was rested and I was focused and I was ready to get back to it. Right. But after those two weeks off, I'm always regretting, like, why did I even take the time off? That was, and, that, that was me today. Today was the first time I've, I went back to the gym this morning. Um, and it's been about a week, but I only went back for like three, three days because that I wasn't feeling well. And I just needed a, like a really big mental reset. And today was, was huge when it, when it came to the gym. It was, it was a great workout. I'm actually going to go back for round two um, later today. All about those two-a-days. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've always professed that uh, fitness and working out and exercise in general is the first step to really discovering who you are for a path of personal growth. Can you Absolutely. relate? Absolutely. I think when you get there, it's always getting there is the hardest part, right? It's setting that habit. Like the first, I think it's 21 days is, is pretty brutal, but then it becomes a habit. And if you don't, you know, continue on that path, you'll all notice I'm irritable or, or, you know, just cranky or snappy. But the, the thing that I noticed when you start and when I, when I train people in the gym or when I'm talking to other competitors and we are in the gym together and we're talking, you realize what you're capable of. You know, it, you, you, you view yourself differently and it's always about improving, like taking that next step. And it, it, it turns into a whole complete journey. It's, it's, it's not about your looks. Um, of course, we like to feel good. We like to look good. We want to wear clothes that we want to wear. We want to go and feel good in a bathing suit. Um, those are some pretty nice perks. But when you figure out what you're in your mind and what you're capable of, it, it's almost as it's like a, a catalyst to what other things that you can do in life. Because as you make those little gains, you start to build the confidence in yourself. And when you have confidence, that's the most beautiful part of a person. Um, you know, I, I love the saying, you're not, um, you're not beautiful because you're confident. You're confident, wait, you're not beautiful because you're confident. You're confident because you're beautiful. You know, so when you feel that beauty within yourself, it, it radiates and shines. And I feel like starting out in the gym and, and learning those gains and seeing how you can go can just be a catalyst to, to your whole life. Mm -hmm. And how, how much of a factor is confidence when you're maybe coming out of a relationship or getting into a new one? Oh my gosh. Uh, I, 
a hundred percent. If you're not confident with yourself and you're getting yourself into a relationship, you're going to find yourself settling. Um, and you're not going to, you're, you're going to tolerate <laughs> things that you would not normally tolerate because you're like, Oh, well, you know, but, but then, you know, I'm like this over here. So I guess I can justify this action. Um, as soon as you have like in your head, like your confidence, your, what you want, what you're going to be going after and like, you will not settle for anything. And it's when we settle is when a little piece of us dies because I've settled a lot of times and I've noticed myself every time I settle, I backslide. Mm -hmm. So this last relationship I got in, um, I actually, I, I found myself and I was not going to settle. And I was, I actually think I really helped him um, become a better person as well. Mm -hmm. you know, he struggled with, with drinking and I can't have that in my life, nor do I want it in my life. But it, it was, he was more of a binge drinker and he hid that for a very long time, but I started to pick up on signals. So I completely, you know, I was very cutthroat and I, I'm so sorry. I'm not putting myself through this. I'm not going through this. I mean, we dated for about six months and it, it was, you know, it was, it was getting pretty serious. And I, I literally, I just, I dropped it, you know, since then, like he's going uh, to meetings, he's in, he's in a recovery program and he hasn't drank in three months. And, you know, he like Justine, like, you were such an eye opener for me because what I was doing in the past would, I would, I would forgive and move forward when you're only enabling somebody's negative behavior. You know, there's a lot of times where people are coming at you and making you feel that you're the bad person for leaving them, for abandoning them. And then we get sucked back in and then we're still not thriving. We're not growing and we're settling for somebody else's happiness. But as soon as I cut that, I, I not only accelerated, but now he's accelerating. Um, and we, you know, we have a good friendship and I'm really happy for him and he's, he's doing really well. That's phenomenal. It, however, you can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. So pushing and prodding and saying, um, if you don't quit this, then I'm never going to do this. Uh, that's not a very good strategy for, um, leading somebody to a better life. And he, he had to be ready at the point for himself. It was never, he could not use you as a motivation and it had to come from his own sovereign self of like, I'm ready to make a change. Yeah. Yep. You're absolutely right. But it's so funny because now he's going through the exact same situation with one of his family members. And <coughs> my heart hurt in a way, but he sees where I was coming from. It, it, it's almost a complete mirror. And a part of me just, you know, I'm, I'm there to be a friend and to support him through this because I, I didn't really have anybody to, to really help me through it. Um, but, you know, he sees things differently and, I, and I've gotten a thank you from it. So no matter, you know, how bad of a person I was at that very given moment, uh, that, that thank you is, is really, is really warming to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being honest with your, with your partner or somebody else who's in your life is going to do them so many more favors than the enablement and the passivity that we get in a bad habit of, um, kind of like, Oh, it's none of my business. It's not my place. Well, absolutely. It came from your choice of not allowing it to happen in your life. So it was absolutely your business. And it's also too, like, what are you going to also, when you're settling and you have children, what are you showing your kids? So there was, you know, it, it, it's not easy, especially when we're coming from a, a family of loss and emptiness with that male aspect figure where there's a lot of love and joy and, and family here. Uh, but when you're, you introduce a male figure to your children and they get kind of attached, you know, I, and I'm a very honest person when it comes to my children and I was very open with them and I let them know why I did what I did. Um, and though they were sad, they, they understood, you know, and cause I don't want, I don't ever want my kids to settle either. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's settling. I've, I've settled plenty of times and I'm done settling. Yeah, same thing. Uh, same thing. Doing your children the favor by being 100% honest with them about your choices for their benefit as well um, so that they don't learn that pattern that you, are, you're, you yourself are trying to break, that settling pattern. Yeah, these, those patterns are, you start recognizing them, you know, especially like I, I, I did a lot of work uh, with one of your previous guests, Laura, and when she started pointing out my patterns, I was like, wow, oh my gosh, these are patterns. I, 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 totally eye-opening. So when you go and you ask and you receive help and you're open-minded to change and suggestion, that's you know you've got to be willing to do the work but when when you're when you're going through that process it's just like oh like mind blown all the time <laughs> it's cer- it's certainly not easy that's for sure yeah it's it's Laura was a big blessing for me and she has been in my life too so uh, hugely grateful for her to introduce the two of us and that's how we got started on our conversation over um over our phone call last week yeah and when you're blessed with go ahead no she just like she took like i went through a traumatic breakup and she just helped me get through that not only she helped me with my eating habits she even helped me with my eating patterns I mean, we did so much work together. Um, she's worked with my children. She's done a lot of internal work in, inside my home. And it's, it's been, you know, she, she's really improved our quality of life and, and communication and, and how, how to navigate and, and work through certain situations. And, you know, instead of doing what you're so used to doing. And I just, Laura's great. Yeah, I I couldn't thank her enough for just uh, collaborating with me. Um, We had a lot of similarities and we had a lot of alignment between the way that we think. And I've just, it's been a pleasure to watch her grow. And now uh, we're getting to um, share your message through the podcast because of her as well. Right. It's it's funny how that works. You know, it's just kind of like the ripple effect. Yeah. And that's the purpose of this community is to bring together um, authentic people who don't shy away from having the hard conversations like like today and um, in the future whatever conversation comes out of it for the benefit of the entire community and i do love san diego it's an amazing town it is hot down here right now i don't know what happened oh i feel like summer came late and but it it is so hot i know it's i've been worried this is like the first time i actually put my hair down in two weeks, I was like, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna do my hair today. Um, I, my profession, my professional life, I, I'm a hospice nurse. So I, I run an admissions department and I have an appointment down in La Jolla um, later on this afternoon to go meet with the patient. So mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a huge, <clears throat> another angle you can spin when you wanna look at um, your life. You know, I, I I deal with people dying on a daily basis and I see on a daily basis, the impact of people's choices that they've made throughout their lives and how that directly is correlating towards when they're on their deathbed. You know, doing hospice is probably one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever done in my life. Um, A lot of people do not understand that, but when, you're able to be there for somebody in such a vulnerable um, time in their lives and be there to help relieve any suffering that they may be having and being there to, for family members is absolutely incredible. Um, but it's, that's really been a huge eye opener for me, watching people who were chronic smokers pass from lung cancer. You know, let's talk about the drinkers who are dying from liver disease and they're only in their 50s. You know, so there's so much, you know, stuff that I, I've been able to, you know, really look at from my own personal life, my patient's life, um, learning from other people from their stories and being inspired by them and, you know, watching people turning struggles into strengths and growing as individuals. It's just, this world, it can be so beautiful if we really sit back and look at it 
and that it can also be so ugly. It really also depends on like how you're going to view it. Mm -hmm. uh, through which that. lens, yeah. yeah. What lens are you going to look through? Because I can promise you that the positive lens is so much better and so much more fulfilling uh, for me. And I'm so happy that I found that. Mm -hmm. From all of the things that you just told me that you do on a daily basis, it sounds to me like it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you recover, refuel, rejuvenate from pouring into others so many times besides your fitness and nutrition? Oh, man. You know, I, I really, I go to bed at like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> no, but um, really, I, to, you, you, you got to put yourself first. And, you know, you have to really, when you put yourself first and you do the work and the care, care for yourself, the others is just natural. Um, you know, I really also protect my energy. I don't, I don't pour in and do energy with people who don't, who I don't energetically align myself with. Um, you know, there's, there's kind of like that time and place or the, you know, the people that, you know, kind of resonate towards you that you want to, that you want to pour into. Um, and when you're, you're helping, it's, it's, it's inspiring. And I think that in itself boosts your morale and makes you feel better and helps you rejuvenate because you're, you're watching people transform around you. And you're kind of like that direct correlation, um, you know, and helping them. So I, I go to bed early. I get a lot of sleep. I take a nutraceutical freak. I have, you know, a whole line that, you know, I dedicate, you know, I, I feed my body great food. My nutrition is on point. Um, and I just, I, I just, I try to take the best care of myself that I possibly can um, to, to just be me. Well, I, I don't know how I do it sometimes either, but I, I absolutely do love it. <laughs> Take a vacation, girl. Oh, I, I do. I need, I need one of those. <laughs> September is self-care month. Oh, and, nice. and I think that uh, if anybody gets the chance to go to San Diego in September, they have to take the opportunity because it's a gorgeous place to visit. Yes, it is so pretty. And you quite have to come down and go yep. paddleboard. Yep, I absolutely love that. Quite a few of our former guests are living or close to San Diego. Nice. And uh, we could probably just connect and grab some coffee or lunch, and I would absolutely love that. Yeah, or we could take my boat out and go wakeboarding. That would be fun too. <laughs> All right, I'm in. I need a I need a vacation also. <laughs> well, come on down to San Diego. There's plenty to do down here. Good. What is the single scene like in San Diego for you? Okay. I will be completely a hundred percent transparent right now. I don't even, my, my dating life is pretty sad right now because I don't have time for it. Um, but let me tell you these apps that come out, the Bumble, the Tinder, I guess there's a new one called Hinge and, um, This thing right here could be a huge, uh, you know, dating factor. I, I don't think um, right now that's not some an area I'm focusing on. Um, I, I don't really want to go out and look for it. I just want something to happen natural um, and just kind of take its place. I'm, I've always wanted to remarry, and I miss that marriage component. And I miss my husband so much. Um, he was seriously my best friend. And we would laugh and laugh and just play. And we were, we were best friends. And so I think I've always been like really focused on finding that again. But it, I haven't I've been more like trying to find it versus letting it come to me. Um, so, you know, with this last uh, relationship fail or maybe not a fail, but you know, the, it didn't work out. Um, I just kind of decided that I was just going to really focus on my career, um, my children, uh, buddy, fitness, um, family, and just really just focus and give all of my energy to that. Um, because I, 
I think when the time comes or that person who's meant to be in my life, um, it's just going to happen natural and hope maybe I'll bump into them at the gym or even the grocery store. Um, but I can tell you the, the party bar going out that, that kind of scene. Um, I've never had, um, anything, uh, put, like just take off from, from that. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what the single dating life is just because I'm so consumed with um, fitness, kids, and work, and just kind of figuring all that stuff out. Um, but there are some pretty good stories about all these online dating apps. Maybe I've, if they ever have time. I've got a couple. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> See, I mean, but it's a good, it, it's also a good way to, to meet people. You know, you can be very direct. You know, there's, there's a, a huge perk to having that app. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, <clears throat> you don't need to be shy or you don't have to put on a front. You can be a hundred percent authentically you. And if somebody wants to gravitate that, then great. Um, but for, for me, I just haven't been able to put any of my energy in that route. I'm not against it at all. Um, I have a coworker who was showing me, you know, one of, one of her, her apps and she's like can you respond for them like can you can you talk to them for me and I'm like no you're gonna talk to them yourself because you're gonna have to go out on the date um so it I don't really have a good dating life all in due time and once um once you maintain these priorities as your top um simply that as your top priorities the more you focus on you, the more you grow personally and within your family and um, make them a priority as well, the more likely it is that somebody's going to gravitate to that. Yep. And that's what I'm hoping for. That it really is. Because it, it's hard to enter a dating relationship and, them, and then them not understand uh, your fitness or um, how I actually got into bodybuilding, like the actual bodybuilding fitness in itself saved me from when I lost my husband, but I was dating a, a gentleman who told me, you know, my, my coach at the time, I had a personal trainer. I was looking good. I started to feel good. And he goes, just see, and he goes, you got some really nice quads. He goes, you got some great muscle definition. Have you ever considered competing? I laughed at him. I'm not kidding. I laughed at him. His name was Rue. I said, Rue, you are out of your mind. I will never be that girl. Like, literally. So, go to show. Um, I was, my boyfriend at the time, he goes, Justine, like, you're really starting to lose a lot of weight. Like, you know, your, your confidence is going up. Who are you trying to impress? And I, you know, I was really taken off guard. And I said, well, didn't you know that Rue wants me to do a bikini competition? I'm not kidding you. He literally sat there and laughed at me. And he said, there is no way that you will ever be able to do something like that. And I looked at him and I said, watch me. And I lit, I, boom, I went. And that's actually how I ended up falling into uh, the, the bikini competition category. Um, you so left, and you left that guy far behind because he is no longer around because he told you you cannot do it. And from what I know of you, if I told you you couldn't do it, you would fucking prove oh. me wrong. Oh, God. And it's like the most, like, just tell me I cannot do it because that'll just light this fire um, inside of me and I will do it. And I will do it with style and grace and blow your mind. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I'm very proud of you for making that stand and making that point and for doing it for the right reasons because you wanted to do it and for no other reasons except for to prove to yourself that you could. And it's, it literally it turned into a huge blessing in disguise because now I have a burning passion for it. I love it. The stage, the posing, the makeup, the hair. It's just, it's such an incredible feeling, even down to the spray tan. Um, so I'm so excited to make my big comeback and, you know, of course, I, I don't know if I'll get my pro card right away and that's okay because one thing that I've noticed is that I've had to push my shows. So if I am not ready for a show, I'm not going to beat myself up over it at all because the stage is always there. 
And I'm always going to be able to grace that stage and, and be that version that I need to be. But I'm also not going to step on that stage until I'm ready. And my coach knows, I said, until I look like a pro, I, I don't even want to hit the stage. Uh, I was actually supposed to be competing uh, in October. And I said, oh my, they just did the world's WBFF out in the Bahamas. And I was like, I was looking at these beautiful athletes and I was just, I'd go look at their Instagram page and I'd go see where they were at a certain amount of weeks out. And I'm like, I'm not there yet. You know, like, you know, I, I, I'm not there yet. And I want to be at that level because I want that pro card. So I'm actually going to go try to shoot for December now. So it, it's, it's just all about like being realistic with yourself, not beating yourself up. Um, if I did get a sinus infection and I was out of the gym for a week and if I needed a little bit of a break or, you know, something came up with a patient and I didn't make it to the gym, like don't beat yourself up over it. Like everything is going to happen and fall into place as it may. And you know what? October just wasn't my time and I'll shoot for December. And you know what? If December doesn't work out and I have to wait till 2020, then I wait till 2020. But when I get on that stage, I mean, I already, I already have my routine down. I have it. I can, I can show it to you all day long. And last time when I would compete, I would only start doing my posing routine about six weeks out. So what I'll like 13 weeks out from Atlanta. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. Yeah. And it's, it's all about the journey and the destination is just the reward. You're right. Yeah. And I'm doing so much personal growth through this because I've never enjoyed a competition prep the way that I have now. Um, this, this, this prep has been, I, I've just transpired into like a different person per se. And it's, it's made me better and I haven't been snappy or hangry or uptight you know i get cheat meals i'm like what i get a cheat meal like this is awesome you know burritos all day long down here in san diego with that california burrito i can eat those every single day my favorite well if dylan is around he might have something to say because he's a coach in training i know but dylan he's the he's also my burrito date so when it's cheat meal day, him and I go down to our favorite taco shop because my daughter's not a fan of them. And we split that burrito and we get to sit there and laugh. And you know, what's really funny is um, my husband and I, we would do the same thing. We would always go have uh, like taco burrito dates and you know, we loved Mexican food. So to enjoy that piece with him is really special. So I, I love that. Oh, I love it for you. That's awesome. Yeah. He's a little piece of heaven. Yeah. Well, I know your time is valuable and I want to just say thank you before I let you go for the day. And if somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Um, Instagram, uh, at Justine June, J-U-S-T-I-N-E, J-U-N-E. Um, I do have a J Spire fitness page, um, on Facebook. Um, so that can also, you can utilize that as well. But um, Instagram, I'm more active on Instagram um, than I am on my other platforms. Yeah, I've noticed more and more pictures and videos and Instagram stories of Buddy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep yeah, watching. keep watching. I love that dog. He's so cute. Oh, he is. And if you come down, we'll have to take him out on the boat or something. When I come down. Yes, when you come down. I look I'll forward to to hanging out with you. Thank you very much, Justine. I really appreciate it. All right. You have yourself a good day. You too.